Good morning, church. Psalm 23. Let's just read the whole psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul and leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely in goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Through the valley. Through the valley. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask you to anoint me to preach. Anoint these your people to hear, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Psalm of David, Psalm 23, is by far one of the most popular psalms. And he drew me to this, seeking his face last night and this morning. And he drew me to verse 4. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. The valleys are necessary. We don't like the valleys. We don't appreciate the valleys until they're over. But they're necessary. Why? Because we learn who we are in the valley. When we're on the mountaintop, it's easy to Praise God, everything's good. Right? So when we're in the valley and having to go through the trial or the tribulation or whatever we're going through in the midst of that valley, we often become like the children of Israel and we murmur and we complain. The valley is God's way of teaching us trust. Of teaching us dependence on him. Notice what David said. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no, fear no evil, for thou art with me. See, we 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 look at this and we get it twisted. We think that he's only with us on the mountaintop. He's abandoned us in the valley. You go back and you study Genesis with Joseph being thrown into the prison. The Bible says even though he was thrown into the prison that God was with Joseph. Adversity does not mean you have been left, church. Adversity does not mean Heartache does not mean, trials do not mean that you have been abandoned. The word says, you are with me. We may be going through the valley, but Lord, you're with me. We may be going through the valley of, of, of indecision and the valley of, of trying to figure out what comes next. He's there. The Bible says he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. You think he's going to leave you in a valley? No. -uh. You cost Christ. We cost Christ too much for him to leave us in the valley. The valley is necessary. But the valley is meant to pass through. 
He said, through. When I walk through the valley. We're not meant to stay in the valley. There's a lesson in the valley, yes. But we're not meant to make camp and live there. It's like the, the, the children of Israel. When they came out of Egypt, the wilderness experience, scholars believe, should have taken three and a half years tops. Three and a half years. Instead, it drug out over 40 because of their unbelief. God cannot work with unbelief, church. He can work with, with everything else. He cannot work with unbelief. So you may find yourself in a valley. You may find yourself in the valley in, or I'll give you another Old Testament example. The book of Exodus, when they were fleeing from Pharaoh and they came to the Red Sea. And Pharaoh's behind them and the Red Sea's in front of them and they have nowhere to go. What did God do? He parted the Red Sea and the Bible says they walked over on dry land. You can trust him through your valley. You can trust him with your backside of the desert. You can trust him when you're dealing with Pharaoh's army and you don't know which way to go. He will make a way. He will make a way. It may not be the way we expected it, but he will make a way. See, the valley, like I said, is usually where we learn our lessons. It is usually where God can, can mold us and teach us. Because we very rarely learn on the mountaintop. Because everything's smooth sailing. Everything is going good. So what do we do? We allow our relationship to lax. We allow our relationship with him to kind of go a little bit cold. We don't study as much as we should. We don't pray as much as we should because everything is good. So he allows us to have to go through the valleys to try to draw us to back to him. Back into proper relationship. But he told David, or David said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You go and you study the book of Job. The Bible says in Job 1, he he's talking to Satan and he says, Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him in all the earth. And the Bible says in Job, I believe it's 14, Job says, though you slay me, yet I'll trust you. Though you slay me, yet I'll trust you. Lord, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why you're, 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 you're taking me through this valley. But I'm choosing to trust in you because you know the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. And every chapter in between. Child of God, let me tell you something. There is nothing. Nothing. That happens to us as children of God. That is not orchestrated or allowed by God.
It is to strengthen our faith. It is to make us realize, no, that's not the word I want. It is to check and test our faith. Is our faith in Christ and Him crucified, or is it in other stuff? Because if it's in other stuff, when we go through the valley, when we go through the backside of the desert, we'll end up like the children of Israel. We'll murmur and we complain. But if it's anchored in Christ, we have that assurance that he is with us. He is with us even in the valley. And I know that there's a whole segment of Christianity today that says, if you're if you're dealing with trouble, the Lord is not with you. If you're dealing with trouble, just confess it away. I wonder what these word of faith people do with Job. I've heard one, and I won't call his name, I could, that says, oh, Job just needed more faith. But yet the Bible says when Satan went to God and said, and he asked him, have you considered my servant Job? God said, there is none like him in all the earth. His faith, he was upright in his faith. He was perfect in his faith. And yet God allowed Satan to do everything he did to Job. So there is no place in Christendom where we plateau and we come to a place where we'll never have another issue. This side of glory. The only way we will not have an issue in this life is when the trump of God sounds or we die. The valley is necessary because it's in the valley where he shows up most. It's in the valley when our backs are backed up against the wall and we see no way out. That he shows up and goes to work. When the disciples were in the in the storm, in the boat, and Jesus was asleep. And they had to go and wake him up. And they said, Carest thou not that we perish. And he arose and immediately rebuked the storm. Church, let me ask you something. If he didn't rebuke the storm, if he decides not to remove you from your valley, will we trust him? Will we trust him the same as we do when we're on the mountaintop? Like I said, it's easy to praise him when we're on the mountaintop because everything's good. Everything's smooth. Everything is it is going well. So what happens is we get comfortable. We get comfortable because we're on the mountaintop. We feel like we're floating on cloud nine. So when we get comfortable, our relationship kind of gets weak. We don't study. We don't pray. See, he allows the adversity to come in and the valley experiences to come in to draw us closer to him. He 
human effort can only do so much. I'm glad I've got people I can turn to to talk and pray with me through stuff. But they're only human. They cannot speak to my storm and say, peace be still. They cannot walk with me through the valley. That is my valley. I've got to walk through it alone with my father. So that I learn how to trust in him. The Bible says in 2 Peter, they cannot stray the fiery trials. Think it not strange. And people say, well, the cross defeated Satan, so why does the Lord still allow everything he allows? To purify our faith. To show us how much us is still in us. How much we're depending on our flesh. How much we're depending on our prayer life or our Bible study or our... You let Satan attack and see what happens. Satan attacks and immediately we try to fix it. Instead of resting in the fact that he was defeated 2,000 years ago when Christ said it is finished. We are to rest in his finished work. We are not meant to fight the devil, church. Not, no. We are meant to rest in Christ. He said in Matthew, he came to give rest. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But the valleys are necessary to show us us. And to show us the Lord. See, it's in the valleys that we learn how weak we are and how powerful he is. Because he could have left. He could have left us in the valley. But the Bible says he is sticking, he will stick closer than a brother. You have people that may leave. You have people and family and friends that may leave. He will never leave. He will never leave. The only way he will leave is if we force him to. And what do I mean by that? We quit believing the gospel. That is the only way he will leave. And even if we stop believing, he will continue to try to draw us back. The valley is necessary. Turn to Psalm... 86, I believe it is. No, nope, it's not 86. The Valley of Baca. And they would go to 
into the valley of Baca. And they would find respite for their souls. See, we oftentimes go through the valley and we see nothing around us but desert. And we're thirsty and we're dry. But in the midst of being thirsty and dry, he provides an oasis. He provides an oasis so that we, that gives it, that clenches just enough thirst to keep us going. The valley is not forever, church. Notice what the Bible says. He said, through the valley. Like I said, it was never meant for us to build camp in the valley and live there. We're supposed to be passing through and knowing and trusting our Father that He will lead us out. It may not be when we want it. And oftentimes it's not when we want it. Because unfortunately, our stubbornness keeps us from learning the lesson. Every valley has a lesson to be learned. So the longer it takes for us to learn that lesson, the longer we're going to be in that valley. Once again, you go back to the children of Israel. The desert experience, the backside of the, de the, the, the passing from Egypt into the promised land, Bible theologians say should have not taken any more than three and a half years. Yet it took 40. Because they murmured and they complained. They murmured and they complained. Mummering and complaining is the opposite of faith. The two don't mix, they're oil and water. Either you're trusting God through it or you're not. And I know that's easier said than done. Because when you're in the valley and you can see no way out, and you 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 look and you see when I when I picture a valley, I picture like the Grand Canyon, like that valley in the middle of the Grand Canyon. And you see the canyon on either on either side. And you're like, how am I gonna get out of here? And so we start trying to figure out how to get out. We start trying to scheme our way out. Jacob. Sir Planner. He wanted the birthright, but he didn't want to go about it God's way. So what did he do? He schemed to get the birthright. And then his mother tells him, Jacob, go to Laban. Go to my brother Laban's house and stay until Esau, this anger in Esau passes over you. He was in Laban's camp for some 20 years. He would never see his mother Rachel again. Or no, his mother Rebecca again. My bad. All because he tried to get the birthright a way that the Lord was not pleased with. 
had he waited, the Bible says those who wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 43, I believe. Shall renew their strength as eagles. But we get tired of the waiting. We get tired of the waiting because, Lord, I want I want results now. I want this hurt gone now. I want this addiction dealt with now. I want this pain dealt with now. I want whatever it is dealt with now. Not realizing that while we want the surface level stuff dealt with now, he's doing a deeper dive on the inside of us to bring out the more intimate stuff so he can deal with them. That is the sanctification process. But the valley shows us us. And thank God the word says, even though I walk through the valley, thou art with me. The Bible says in Job, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. He does not forsake his children, church. Once again, that does not mean we can't pluck ourselves out of that hand. If we were to jump out of his hand, he will allow us to do so. Case in point, Judas. And I'm going to leave that alone. But the valley, at the end of the valley experience, we can prayerfully say, I know more about my father than I did before it started. See, the valley experience, if we go through it without the mummering and the complaining, he reveals himself to us in a more intimate way. He reveals himself to us as father. He reveals himself to us like he did Abraham when he offered up Isaac. I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, your provider. But see, it's human nature for us to complain. I'm often baffled at the children of Israel. They had water out of a rock. They had manna from heaven. And yet they still murmured and complained. The fall so hindered humanity that faith is a foreign thought. Faith is a foreign we have no clue. But the Bible says that he, I'm going to point you back to Psalm 23, verse 3. He restoreth my soul and leads me in the path of the righteous. And then look at verse 5 and well, let's go to five. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're told that the trials of this life are temporary. They're not permanent, church. I'm going to deal with something. No, I'm not. 
I will probably start a series probably Wednesday night. Depending on how he leads. Um, dealing with suicide. And I have my reasons for it. I'm not going to relate those reasons. Out of respect for the individuals. But... Suicide is running rampant in this nation because people are absolutely desperate. The only solution for that is the cross. The only solution to that is Jesus Christ. Period. Point blank. You you hear the, the, the saying, man has a hole in their heart only God can fill. The more I pastor, the more I realize that. Because we're poor, pitiful human beings. We can pray with y'all. We can study with y'all. We can, whatever the case. But only the Lord can ultimately solve that issue. So, if, if the Lord does not change my direction, Starting Wednesday night, I will start dealing with the mental health side of all of this and where the gospel plays into that. Because unfortunately, The church doesn't have the answer. The answer is the cross. The Bible says he came to set at liberty them that are bruised. The Bible says he came to create in us a clean heart. The Bible says he will give us a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. He's the only one that can do it. Not anything else. Through the valley. You can trust him through your valley. You can trust him through whatever trial, whatever tribulation you find yourself in. Because there is one thing about God that I have learned is the fact that he cannot fail. He can do it, church. He can do all things but fail. He will see you through the valley every single time if we allow him to do it. But see, we oftentimes, we we set up camp in the valley instead of passing through. It's just like the children of Israel once again in Egypt, in the wilderness. They set up camp and they murmured and they complained and they even got to the point they said, Moses, just let us go back to Egypt. 
it is better for us to be slaves in Egypt than be in the wilderness and starve to death. But yet they had food in the form of manna and water out of a rock. He will not leave us in the valley. You may think he's left you, child of God. You may think that you're a million miles away from him and that he has abandoned you in your valley. You can rest assured he has not. If he led you to that valley, He's going to lead you through and out the other side. He's not going to let you die in the valley. Not going to do it. You mean more to him than y'all will ever know. Than we will ever know. You want to know how much he loves us? Look at Calvary. Look at the price it took him to buy us back and tell me that that God that did not even spare his own son is going to let us die in a valley? Not the God I serve. Uh-uh. He will see you through the valley as long as you trust him. See, trust and faith go hand in hand. Trust and faith go hand in hand. You have to trust in who he is. He is the God that loves you. He's not leading you through the valley to let you die. He's leading us through the valley to show us him. And how weak we really are. And how strong he is. Go through the valley. Don't make camp there. Raise your way out. No, that's not even the correct terminology there. Raise him while he's leading you out. Because let me tell you something, child of God. He is not. is not 1,000% going to leave you in that valley. Not gonna do it. As long as you keep the faith, as long as you hold to that nail, my Lord, as long as you hold to that nail scar hand, you're coming out the other side of that valley. You're going to walk into the promised land and out of that valley. But let me tell you, church, the valley is not a one and done thing. It's just like the potter in Jeremiah. It's a repeatable thing. It's a continual thing. But there are reasons behind it. And those reasons behind it is to ultimately show us who we are and who we serve. He's not going to leave you in the valley. He will be with you in and through the valley.
The question is, are we trusting him to get us out? Because see, when, when the going gets hard, we want to fix it. We want to put our hands to it. We want to, Lord, if I pray more, will you get me out of this quicker? If I study more, will you get me out of this quicker? Which inevitably postpones and prolongs the valley experience. Am I saying not to pray and not to study? Absolutely not. But your victory and your way out of that valley is Christ and him crucified. Prayer and Bible study will strengthen you, but it won't be a snap of the finger and you be out of that valley. Until we have learned the lesson that he has for us individually to learn in that valley, we will stay there. Plain and simple. We can ask him, we can beg him, Lord, get me out of here. But until we have learned the lesson that he is, now listen to me, church, that he is everything we have need of. And that we can trust him in our valley. Because see, if we can trust him in our valley, we can trust him with anything else. See, he's trying to teach us trust and dependence. And the valley oftentimes is the only place we learn that trust and dependence. Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, I ask that you give them grace, that you give us grace if we find ourselves in the valley. Give us the grace to know and the knowledge to know that you're with us, that you have not left us in that valley to die, that you will lead us through the valley. Satan may want us to die in the valley, but you, Father, want us to pass through. And as long as we hold that Dale-scarred head, you will see us through that valley. Father, teach us to trust you. Teach us to depend on you and to know that the cross is the answer. See, you paid for everything we have need of at Calvary. In Jesus' name I pray, Father. Amen. I will see y'all Wednesday night.